Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I made an earlier video where I took exception to the published comments of the manager for Gennady Golovkin. Right? That manager said that Andre Ward should stop mentioning Gennady's name for future fights until Andre resolved his legal dispute with his promoter, Dan Goosen. Right? I thought the statements were absolutely ridiculous. Right? I threw a red flag on those statements because, of course, Andre's business disagreement with Dan Goosen has nothing to do with Gennady Golovkin. Nothing whatsoever. Right? You, the boxing fan, needs to realize when statements being made by any member of the boxing community lack substance. Right? Understand that since Andre and Dan Goosen have had their highly publicized uh, disagreement, understand that Andre has been in the ring in a televised fight against Edwin Rodriguez. And I can tell you that, you know, the dispute did not hamper, did not prevent that fight from taking place, right? Understand all of the parties involved understand the importance of finalizing business deals and moving forward, right? There are going to be disagreements between fighters and promoters in the sport of boxing. There always are. At any moment in time, trust me, there's a fighter out there having some dispute with either a member of his camp or a member of his promotional team. If you look up published cases, you're going to see published cases involving some big names like Marco Antonio Barrera, right, involved in a published decision about a dispute he had with a member of his camp concerning an alleged managerial contract, right? You're going to find out that Bernard Hopkins was involved in disputes, right, that actually led to court decisions that are all over the internet, right? So boxing fans shouldn't be confused or distracted by any private dispute between a fighter like Andre Ward and his promoter, right? That's not a reason for a third party to claim that Andre Ward should not want to fight them, right? Recognize what I believe, it's my opinion, what I believe is a dodge when you see one, right? Gennady Golovkin was willing to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., now, many of you, in commenting on my earlier video, pointed out that Golovkin is a middleweight. That's fine. He is. But he wanted to fight a super middleweight. He wanted to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., a guy who's big. Understand, a guy who, when he's not fighting, walks around at 180 pounds. If you don't believe me, just Google Chavez Jr.'s weight gain after fights here on YouTube, right? And so weight wasn't an obstacle when Gennady Golovkin decided he wanted to fight a 168er, right? You'll notice, too, that in the statements by Golovkin's manager, which were published on BoxingScene.com, you'll notice that they didn't use weight as an excuse, right? The complaint was simply that Andre Ward is having a disagreement with his promoter. And so they wanted the Ward camp to stop mentioning Golovkin as a possible opponent, right? Since Golovkin had already decided that he wanted to fight Chavez Jr., 
why would he hesitate in fighting Andre Ward? Clearly, weight couldn't be the issue. Well, of course, now you've actually had an official statement from the Ward camp. Right? Andre Ward's manager, James Prince, and his lawyer, Josh Dubin, have both come out and have both said, we want to fight Janady Golovkin. Right? Understand, that's the trifecta for the Ward camp because Andre Ward earlier said he was willing to fight Janady Golovkin. Now you're hearing from Andre Ward's manager and from Andre Ward's lawyer. Right? So there's no reason why the fight can't take place. None whatsoever. Right? Dan Goosen and Andre Ward will work together to fight Janady Golovkin. Just like Dan Goosen and Andre Ward worked together to fight Edwin Rodriguez. Right? This is after the two groups had a business dispute. That business dispute can't be used by third parties as the reason why they aren't going to fight Andre Ward. Right? Understand, Janady Golovkin has his own group of professionals. He would get paid for a Ward fight. He can negotiate receiving the money up front. Right? We're intelligent people here online. Don't you think big-time media outlets want that fight to happen? Right? Don't you think that fight would draw a crowd? Think about it. Right? Aren't we hearing now, based on three-round fights against people like Daniel Gill, right? Matthew Macklin, based on his recent dominance, right? Ashida, an even shorter fight. Aren't we hearing that Janady Golovkin, who's unbeaten, who is an Olympic medalist, aren't we hearing that he's one of boxing's very best? You know, the way you determine that is by when he fights one of boxing's best. You understand that, right? That's the way boxing works. If you want to be viewed as the best, then you have to go out there and you have to fight guys like Mikael Kessler when you're an underdog, which Andre Ward did, right? Arthur Abraham, Carl Frotch, which Andre Ward did, right? The reigning light heavyweight champion at the time it was Chad Dawson which Andre Ward did, right? Top contenders, Edwin Rodriguez, which Andre Ward did. Understand, for Andre Ward, the work has been done, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> you have a reigning champ like Carl Frotch, who Andre Ward's already fought and has already beaten, right? I believe there's work to do for Janady Golovkin. Rather than hide behind his manager and have his manager issue public statements that members of boxing's pound-for-pound -pound list, guys with extensive resumes, should not mention Golovkin as a future opponent, rather than do that, why doesn't Golovkin actually get in the ring with Andre Ward? If you're going to call out someone at 168 pounds, why would you call out Chavez Jr. who doesn't have a title at 168 pounds instead of calling out a man who does, Andre Ward? Some of you in the comment section here said, who's Andre Ward? He hasn't been fighting. Understand, Andre Ward is a current champion at 168. In fact, let me go further. 
You know the way boxing is today, where you have regular champions and super champions? Let's not confuse Andre Ward's title. Andre Ward is a super champion at 168 pounds currently. Why wouldn't Janady Golovkin want to take a crack at that? With all due respect to Marco Antonio Rubio, aren't you a bit perplexed as to how Golovkin, before agreeing to fight Rubio, could actually call out a 168 pounder? And then when the champ at 168 says, hey, you know what, if you're going to come to the division, why don't you fight me? You notice the Golovkin response. It's not, hey, I'll fight you right after I fight the guy I've called out. No, the Golovkin response is, hey, don't mention my name. Right? You have, you know, an ingrown toenail. I mean, really, it's, you know, you have an issue with your promoter. Some completely unrelated issue. You have an issue with your promoter, and so you shouldn't be mentioning my name. Understand, any issue Andre has with... Dan Goosen, that would affect how they split the money between themselves. That wouldn't impact the payment being made to Janady Golovkin. So why is Golovkin dodging Team Ward? If you don't believe me, just read the comments that were posted yesterday on Boxing Scene from Ward's manager, James Prince, and from his lawyer, Josh Dubin. Right? Who do you want a statement from next? Andre's wife? Andre's parents? I mean, understand. The Andre Ward people want Janady Golovkin. Shouldn't this be what the boxing public wants? Guys on the mythical pound-for-pound pound list actually willing to take on other guys who look like they belong on the list in what would be a battle of unbeatens. Two guys currently holding belts. Let's just say I would consider that to be a high quality match, an intriguing matchup. Think about the styles too. You have Andre Ward who's an excellent defensive fighter who has neutralized offensive juggernauts right, against an offensive juggernaut, right, a guy who looks like it's almost impossible to make it to the second half of a fight, a guy who's running over guys like Matthew Macklin, great body shot, Daniel Gill, right, hits the canvas multiple times, right, is there anyone watching this video who'd prefer to see Golovkin against Rubio instead of Golovkin against Andre Ward? Also, really, what you need to think about is if the disagreement between Andre and Dan Goosen didn't prevent the Edwin Rodriguez fight, why would any fighter use that disagreement as an excuse not to fight Andre Ward? Also, I thought in boxing the point was to fight for titles. I thought if I wanted to be big man in my weight class, in the neighborhood of my weight class, the way to do that was to actually fight the champ in that weight class. Right? Just keep track of the number of guys who want to fight 168 pounders who, curiously, aren't calling out the super champion in the division. Let's talk about another issue another previous video that I made. The video I made yesterday, where I talked about how I thought Sam Solomon was going to beat Jermaine Taylor. Now that was before the news broke that Jermaine Taylor apparently now is under criminal investigation, right, for shooting a cousin. Now let me point out, Right, that the facts of this case are unfolding, right? The information right now isn't complete. But wow, you know, don't you view a criminal investigation of a shooting to be a big distraction for a fighter's camp? 
Let me tell you, too, if you research Jermaine Taylor, you're going to find out that when Jermaine Taylor got his license back, right, after um, suffering a brain bleed years ago, Taylor's people actually admitted that in training for a fight, Taylor weighed 200 pounds and that Taylor had to lose weight to make weight, right? If you go through the Taylor story, you're going to find out that Taylor, right, ruled the roost at 160, right? That's where he beat Bernard Hopkins twice. Then he gained eight pounds, right? Then he was fighting at 168. Look at his record. Right, and you're going to find out that Taylor actually told the Las Vegas Boxing Commission that what he was planning on doing was going back down to 160. Right, he felt that his stamina problems, right, back then Taylor admitted to having stamina problems. He told them that his stamina problems were caused by the fact that he weighed so much between fights and that his training camps were really weight loss camps, right? And that he wasn't in as good a shape as he could be. So what he was going to do was he was going to be more diligent. He was not going to let his weight go between fights. Now, all I'm saying is this. You have a guy who historically has had a problem in training camps, and now he has this distraction? Now he's dealing with an arraignment? Isn't it worse than that, too? It'd be one thing if he shot at a stranger. Okay, then you'd say, all right, well, maybe this guy was an intruder and stuff like that. But for many of us, we know that the problems that bother us the most, that get us in the most hot water with relatives, are these family problems. Right? He shot a cousin. Right? I think we all have that cousin who has issues. Right? That cousin who always seems to need a loan, a donation. Who doesn't seem to realize that you have your own life to live and you have your own bills to pay. Right? I think we all have that cousin who might run with, let's just say, a riskier crowd than you do. Right? Now here... In reading up on this story, you're going to hear words like uninvited, right? And shooting and cousin shot, right? Think about it. The scene was such that a former middleweight champion felt threatened, so threatened that he reached for his gun. Now, if there's a group you would assume in America who can just defend themselves, you would expect it to be professional boxers. But here, Jermaine Taylor, with this family member, felt so threatened, he reached for his firearm. Right? My point is this. That's a lot to digest just in the normal world. Right? If you have a friend and some big event is coming up, right? Let's say a business deal. Let's say a, you know graduation from school or something, right? And then that friend tells you, hey, you know what? I shot a family member yesterday. I'm dealing with the criminal arraignment. I'm going to have to waive extradition if I travel outside the state. Aren't you going to think, man, this guy has a full plate? Now, that's in the regular world. Now, add in the boxing world where the guy then tells you, oh, by the way, I'm fighting for the middleweight title. I'm going to be in training camp. I'm going to be waking up early and I'm going to be doing road work. Then I'm going to be in the ring against sparring partners. Then I'm going to be going over films of my opponent with my trainer. right? And, of course, I'm going to be monitoring what I eat and I'm going to be trying to make weight. I'm going to try to be staying in shape. Man, that's too much to handle. I thought Taylor was going to have problems winning the fight without these problems. 
If you're a gambler, you've got to look at these problems and you've got to say, whoa, this is overwhelming, right? I thought Taylor was a long shot before the problems. I think he's an even longer shot now, right? Fighters aren't robots. This guy is dealing with drama. You can imagine the conversation with other family members, right? Someone's going to say, you shot your cousin? You know, why'd you go get the gun? Right, then we're going to find out about this uninvited guest, right? And you can imagine how that's going to go over, right? Cousin bringing uninvited people to your house, right? So if you're a gambler, pay attention to the story. If you were on the fence about whether to pick Jermaine Taylor in this upcoming match against champion Sam Solomon, wow. Right? This news should knock you off that fence. Understand, Solomon moves around the ring. You have to be in shape and focused. How many red flags are there going to be on this match? Right Before the shooting incident, Taylor had a weight problem. Taylor had a stamina problem. Right, Taylor had a brain bleed after a fight. That's before the shooting. Now you're going to add in criminal charges, a shooting involving a relative? Pfft, come on, man. I think Sam Solomon has the upper hand in that match. I'm not sure where Taylor's head is going to be come fight night. Let's just say he's going to have to climb some mountains to come in the ring physically and mentally ready. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.